to behave. <clears throat> uh, Ryan, in Joe's absence, could I impose on you to call the roll? Sure. Is there a call to start the meeting? Do we do yep. that? Oh, we're good. All right. Uh, Chairman Roberts is here. Here. Vice Chair Ryan is here. Clerk Hanmer, no. Members Hughes. Commissioner Oikel. Commissioner Dean. Here. I see George's box in here. <clears throat> J and G. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's J and G, George. All right. Well, we'll see if he chimes hey. in. But I uh, yeah, so all right. We got okay. you, George. You're in. Got the Commissioner Homicki. Here. Commissioner Edwards. Here. Commissioner Vieira. Commissioner Drake. Here. Commissioner Lambruni. Here. Commissioner Thompson. Here. All right. Thank you. That makes nine. So uh, unless another regular member shows up, we'll uh, beat the three alternates for the first public hearing. Um, first item on the agenda is a public hearing. Uh, for those of you who may not have been through one of our public hearings before, uh, basically we um, have a presentation by the applicant and there's uh, questions from the commission. There may be some back and forth. Um, once that's done, we open it up to members of the public who may have comments on the application. Uh, once the public has had an opportunity to weigh in, uh, we turn it back to the applicant to uh, respond. There may be some more back and forth with the commission. Um, if after, if at that point we feel we have enough information to act on the application. Uh, we vote to close the public hearing, deliberate and vote. If there are uh, open items or additional information that we feel is necessary to be able to um, properly address the application, we may vote to continue the hearing to the next meeting. Uh, if that happens, we'll tell you when and where we're uh, continuing it to. And uh, the other thing I think to bear in mind is that once the public hearing is closed, that means there's no more uh, opportunity for commission members and either members of the public or the applicant to, uh, to interact. So with that, um, call the first item, public hearing 3006-21Z. Uh, Safe Store Real Estate Company, LLC, seeking to amend Site Plan and Special Permit Applications 1941-17Z and 1967-17Z for modifications to a previously approved uh, self-storage facility at 46 Arrow Road. Uh, is there someone here on behalf of the applicant who wants to make a presentation? Good evening, Chair Roberts and members of the commission. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Evan Seaman. I am a lawyer at Robinson and Cole in Hartford uh, here this evening on behalf of the applicant Safe Store Real Estate Company, uh, which is the contract purchaser for the subject's property at 46 Arrow Road. Uh, and this property is about 2.1 acres. Uh, it's in the regional commercial uh, RC district uh, and is uh, surrounded by other properties. Uh, also located in that district, largely uh, developed uh, with commercial and industrial uses. Uh, as uh, the chair just noted, this uh, is an application to modify a special permit and site plan approved in 2017 and amended in 2018. Uh, this, uh, this site was previously approved as a self-storage facility, uh, and that is uh, what we are here uh, tonight to propose as well, the same use. Uh, uh, there are some slight modifications to that prior approval, which I'll get to uh, in just a minute. I'll highlight those in just a minute. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to just provide a brief recap of uh, some of the things that we've done uh, leading up uh, to this evening. Uh, 
um, way back in uh, August, uh, at the end of August uh, last year, uh, we had a virtual pre-application meeting with town staff. Uh, we showed, uh, we shared concept plans, uh, we received comments and we uh, modified uh, the proposal uh, or the layout accordingly. Uh, then in uh, November, uh, I believe November, November 10th, 2021, uh, we appeared before DRAC uh, and uh, we obtained a positive recommendation uh, from DRAC relating to the design of uh, this proposed facility uh, without any suggestions or, or, or conditions uh, by DRAC. Uh, following that, we received some uh, preliminary comments from the town engineer uh, in, I believe on November 23rd, uh, we uh, responded to those and modified our plans accordingly. Uh, several follow-up uh, conversations with town officials and staff ensued, uh, culminating in the, the uh, proposal that is now before you this evening. Uh, so other members of our team will get into the, the details of the, of the changes that are proposed, but I did want to highlight some of the, uh, I guess, some of the uh, uh, more significant changes as part of this proposal. And that is all of which we believe uh, are an improvement uh, to the application that was previously approved in 2017. Uh, so that 2017 approval uh, at 46 Arrow Road uh, was for a, a 90,000 square foot, three-story self-storage facility. Uh, it also included uh, some outdoor storage, approximately 1,650 square feet of outdoor uh, standalone storage units, uh, 11 units, uh, 15 feet by 10 feet. Uh, there were also waivers granted uh, per your regulations to locate parking spaces in the front yard along our road and also to reduce parking spaces from 37 to 32. Uh, and lastly, the, the, the final thing I want to highlight for uh, as part of that 2017 approval was that there was development uh, proposed on the western side uh, of the building uh, of the self of the storage facility. Uh, it included an access drive there. Uh, parking spaces, loading, and trash. So some of the highlights um, that are proposed this evening include uh, a slight increase in the building square footage uh, by about 8,000 square feet from uh, 90, uh, about 90, 91,000 square feet to 99,000 square feet, a, sl a slight reduction in the actual footprint of the building a 2,600 square foot reduction, a reduction in the number of storage units, a 91 unit reduction uh, from 886 storage units uh, to 795, 12% uh, reduction in impervious coverage, uh, reduction in parking spaces from 32 to 17, uh, and elimination of that development, uh, the development that I mentioned on the Western part of, of this site to the west of the building. Uh, uh, namely, uh, there will be no access drive there, there will be no park in there, no loading, and no trash facilities. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, there is a property that is also located in this RC zoning district uh, that is a residential use. And we want to be sure to be as sensitive and respectful as possible to that use. And we believe that by relocating uh, these items from the western part of the site to the eastern part of the site, we'll be able to accomplish that. Uh, the last, before I hand it, introduce uh, other members of our team and hand it over to them, uh, the last point I did want to mention is that um, there were conditions of approval issued under uh, the prior special permit and site plan. Uh, they were really particular to the layout of, uh, of that prior uh, proposal. Uh, so um, we are asking that those be removed and to the extent that the commission uh, have any new conditions of approval or, or new conditions that it might consider as part of, a, of an approval uh, that it instead uh, pursue those uh, this evening. Uh, so I'd like to now introduce uh, some of the members of our team. Uh, uh, joining uh, me on behalf of SafeStore, the applicant is John Williams. And I'll ask John in, in just a minute to 
descri briefly describe Safe Doors operations. Um, we're also uh, joined by our project engineer, uh, Tim O'Neill from Langan. Uh, we also have Philip Argo, landscape architect with WNA Engineering. Uh, and finally, we have uh, Truman G, project architect from Interplan. So uh, with that brief introduction, I'd like to ask uh, John uh, to say a couple words on behalf of SafeStore. Thanks guys, we really appreciate your time tonight. We appreciate uh, the opportunity to work uh, here in your community. Uh, SafeStore has been around for about four or five years now. We've got uh, more than 30 projects up in operation and another um, 25, 30 more in a pipeline right now. Uh, we have a, a mission to really help build better communities uh, for uh, wherever we're at. Uh, we're uh, altruistic in nature and given uh, some storage units uh, to uh, local charities. Uh, we want to have the best looking buildings we can possibly have. Uh, we know storage is a, is a very need-based uh, uh, item for people. Uh, it's really... Uh, uh, not a difficult formula for us. It's how much storage is in a five mile radius. And, and we know there's a deficiency in this location. Um, we appreciate your consideration. I know this site was already zoned at one point in time for storage. Uh, the modifications that we're making, I think, are uh, enhance the site, uh, will make it better uh, overall for the community and for, uh, you know, the facility on the site. Uh, we know that this is going to, will add substantial tax base to your to your town and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to do business here. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have uh, with regard to the project, property, or uh, the operation of the facility. Well, thanks for that. We may have questions after the rest of the presentation that are ones that are kind of within your jurisdiction. So we may come back to you at that point. Certainly. Thanks very much. Tim, uh, can you uh, go through some of the details of the changes that are uh, proposed in this application? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Evan. And uh, for the record, my name is Tim O'Neill. I'm a professional engineer licensed in the state of Connecticut with Langan Engineering here on behalf of SafeStore and WA, the app engineering, the applicants. Uh, and what you're seeing here is a site location map. The project site is located at 46 Arrow Road. It's to the southeast corner of Russell and Arrow Road intersection and just to the east, or sorry, just to the west of Berlin Turnpike. And you'll notice if I zoom in here, you'll see on the aerial that the open and operating fueling and convenience store are located just to the east of the highlighted yellow subject property. That was the originally part of the previously approved application, which this application before you today is solely focused on the self-storage facility highlighted in yellow. So before we get into the blow up of the proposed site plan today, I just wanna point out a few of those um, modifications that Evan had mentioned earlier with some uh, visual visuals applied to them. So on the top here, you'll see the previously approved special permit and on the bottom, you'll see the application before you today and the entire Western access to the site, the parking, the trash enclosure and access to the building has all been removed and the building has been shifted slightly further to the east. And uh, as Evan mentioned, this does more than just open up the buffer between the residential property, which you can see in the bottom left-hand corner there, but it also shields them from the daily activities and operations of the self-storage facility itself. So, you know, lighting and noise will be greatly reduced as everything's taking place on the opposite side of the building. And we're further away, and we'll also be adding some substantial landscaping and planting behind the building. Moving into the, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the, uh, I'd also like to point out the removal of the standalone storage units, the front access overhead doors. Those have been removed in the proposed application. And in the previous approval, there were also direct access storage units on both the eastern and western sides of the building. Those have been removed and the vehicular access to the interior of the building that has also been removed in the current application. So here you'll see a, a blow up of the proposed site plan. Uh, again, we have a significant reduction in parking. Our previous application had about 32 parking spaces. With the removal of the western lot, we've reduced it to about 17 stalls. 
uh, and that's due to the different operations of the type of tenant for the self-storage facility. They're intended for a longer storage period with less frequent visits and a reduced uh, number of traffic and trips to the site. Uh, you'll see the site's ask, access from a single point along Arrow Road to the 17 parking stall parking lot with a three stall loading bay area. The loading area is strictly for unloading trucks. As I mentioned before, there's no internal vehicular access to the site. The trucks will be unloaded and then carted through to sliding glass doors to access the storage unit area, which we can see in the renderings coming up later on. You'll also notice that to the eastern side of the site, we have a retaining wall that's between the convenience store and the storage facility. That wall reaches roughly 18 feet tall. It's protected from vehicular traffic with a guide rail and from pedestrian traffic with a uh, four foot tall fall protection fencing. You'll also notice that we did include a placeholder for a sign in the upper right hand corner, but that's just to, to give you an idea of where we intend to put something. The signage will be permitted under a separate application at a later date. Uh, there is the main office access to the upper right hand corner of the building. And as I mentioned before, the loading access behind the three loading stalls. Uh, the other doors are mainly for um, ingress and egress, but the, the main access points to the building would be the loading and the entrance to the facility. All of the setbacks in the newly proposed layout, layout have been increased, so we're further off all of our property lines, uh, the side, the front yard, and the rear. And we have located our trash enclosure down in the bottom right-hand corner of the site, allowing for a front load uh, dump truck to pick up trash, fully navigate the site, and leave. Uh, and for the traffic, while the gross square footage of the building did increase slightly, the trip generated trips generated had actually decreased. In the original application, the traffic counts were based on the 10th edition of the IT trip generation manual. And since then, in October of last year, they've issued their 11th generation. And that actually reduced our counts by uh, one trip in the PM peak hours and six trips in the weekend peak hours. So the traffic study does re reflect a reduction in traffic volume, even though the square footage has increased slightly based on more accurate count data. I'd also like to mention that with the reduction of the site access to the west, we were able to reduce the proposed impervious area by roughly 12% from the previously approved application as well. And then the uh, parking lot has been designed to accommodate the movement for an SU-30 box truck, which can be seen here on the left. The ingress movement is on the top, pulling into the site, backing into the loading stall, and on the bottom you can see the egress movement where we're leaving the site without disrupting flow uh, within the right of way on Arrow Road or crossing over into any parking stalls that may be on site. And on the right, you'll see the zoning chart, which is listed in the uh, site plan for these submitted documents. There's two major ones that I'd just like to point out. One is the <clears throat> minimum lot frontage on a public right of way. And the requirement for this zone would be 100 linear feet. We have 97 linear feet and that's an existing non-conformity that was also included in the previous approved application. And the second would be the maximum building height calculation. Uh, this building height calculation was confirmed with Charles Morrison, the CEO, um, with the town of Weathersfield. And if you looked on that uh, note five, the, oh, I'm sorry, note four, it is listed out how we came to that conclusion. So the definition states that the average ground level along the front of the building and our front of the building would be the western facing uh, Russell Road face of the building because that's where we have our lot frontage. So we take the average grade, which comes out to be around 270.8 to the highest point of the parapet on the building, which is elevation 304.3, giving us a building height of 33.5, which is less than the required 40 foot maximum building height. I'm just then, curious uh, about the lot frontage why was it measured against Russell Road? Because I mean, it looks like you have 
like a thousand feet on Arrow Road. And so when this site was subdivided, subdivided for the previous application, the rear yard was defined along the eastern side of the property and the front yard was defined along the Russell Road property. And I believe even before the subdivision, it was listed that way. So the, the true lot frontage for this parcel is officially on Russell Road. Uh, so we're, we're going off okay. the 97 linear feet there. All right. And I, I believe a determination was also made that the a long arrow road is also considered a front yard setback, but our true frontage to the right of way would be off of Russell Road. Yeah, I mean, because it's technically a corner lot. Right. Yeah. yeah, it gets a little confusing, but I think that was the, uh, the result of the determination. Is, is the address Russell Road? The address is 47 Arrow Road. And I think that is mostly to, you know, if you type in Russell Road, you may end up looking for a driveway up to the to the uh, western side of the property when in reality the entrance is over off of Arrow. If you do your average elevations along Arrow Road, where does it put your building height? We did do that calculation and I, I can pull those up for you once I turn this over and we are still compliant with that elevation as well. It is closer, I think we're just about right at 40, but we would still be compliant with the building height. Okay. Right, and moving into the stormwater management plan for the site, we are uh, reducing meeting or reducing the previously approved peak flow rates. So that would be a more conservative way to model the uh, stormwater flows than if we were comparing to the existing rate. Um, the previously approved drawing was, our plan was meeting or reducing, reducing existing flows. So now we're further reducing based on our previous approval. And the collection system is based off of your traditional catch basin closed pipe network. It's been sized to convey a 25 year storm without overtopping any manholes or features within the conveyance system. During the 100 year storm condition, there is ponding that occurs on site, but all ponding remains on site and does not leave the site to flood downstream. Uh, the main attenuation for the site is achieved through the uh, five foot diameter retention system highlighted in pink here. It's released at a controlled rate through an underground pipe network, which discharges to an existing connection, an existing pipe to a um, the town system within Arrow Road. And again, we're matching or reducing previously approved flows to that catch basin. Uh, the underground retention system does not infiltrate water to ensure that we have a a sound structural retaining wall to the right. We don't want to introduce groundwater that close. Um, but the groundwater recharge volume is achieved through a dry well structure, which is highlighted in green at the bottom right hand corner of the plan. Uh, each dry well only accepts water from the roof runoff, which is low pollutant. Um, and once the dry well fills up, the water will bypass the dry well and continue on into the attenuation system before discharging to the, uh, the town property. Uh, the main water quality feature on the site would be a hydrodynamic unit, which is highlighted in purple to the bottom left-hand corner of the attenuation system. And that's been rated for an 85% TSS removal with an NJCAT certification, which exceeds the Connecticut state for uh, state requirement for your water quality volume. We do have some additional features, such as the, the uh, the swales and four foot dump, deep sump catch basins and a maintenance and sweeping plan for the, the site that haven't been accounted into the uh, meeting the minimum reg regulations, but will still provide some benefit. Uh, the site and stormwater management system will be maintained by the owner in accordance with the operations and maintenance manual. And that's included as an appendix to the stormwater manual memo that's been submitted along with the application. We also received a comment from the town requesting that the swales to the north and south of the building be lined with riprap. Currently, they are proposed to be lined with a pyramat uh, slope stabilization mat, but um, we're, we're happy to swap that out and put riprap in if uh, the town's more comfortable with that. 
both of them, both swales, even the back one, it seems pretty shallow, uh, pretty. Uh, yeah, the both the top and the bottom are, and here I can, uh, okay, back up slide in here. The, so you can see the pyramid mat is highlighted coming along here down in swale and up on the other side as well. And uh, we do switch to riprap in the steeper area with one foot stone check jams, just to ensure that water doesn't you know, collect and erode as it moves down the steeper portions. Okay, so it'll just be stone at the, at the end towards the separator. Right, so currently okay. we have stone, uh, you know, maybe 20 feet or so up the swale here as it enters into the, the yard drain and then uh, up through the steeper areas along the egress from the, the building here. And then the rest of this would be lined with the pyramid. Perfect. Thank you. All right, and then moving into our soil erosion sediment control plans, we've broken this into four main phases. What you're seeing here would be the first phase. The project is projected to start around March 1st of this year. Uh, we would kick things off with a pre-construction meeting with the town contractor, engineer, and whoever else would like to attend. And then the first thing would be to install all perimeter controls, uh, existing inlet protection, construction entrance, stockpile, uh, sediment trap size based on the Connecticut uh, soil erosion sediment control manual, uh, diversion berms, and the concrete washout once it's needed, along with the tree protection. Uh, you'll also notice that to the east of the site, we have a uh, really a triplicate form of protection going down this slope towards the convenience storm fueling facility. Uh, the first line of defense would be the diversion swales into the sediment trap where water would collect pond, settle out sediments and then enter the town system. And the second would be compost filter tube and silt fencing on the upslope. And then on the downslope, we have a more robust uh, silt fence with a wire mesh, mesh backing, which could handle a lot more if anything were to ever happen and come down that way to ensure that there's no runoff onto the site into the building below. Uh, in, in this phase, you'd expect uh, you know, the major clearing and grubbing and some earthwork. Uh, and then you'd move into phase two. In phase two, we'd keep all of the same soil erosion sediment control measures as in phase one. The sediment trap may change shapes a little bit as the site is brought up to grade and the retaining wall is installed. And in this phase, you'll, you'll have your mass earthwork retaining wall installation and underground drainage installation. And once underground drainage installation is completed, we'll put the proposed inlet protection in. Again, you'll see that the additional forms of protection are remaining over to the eastern side of the site. And from there, we'll move into our phase three and phase four. Phase three would be construction of the footing and the building slab and bringing the site up near finished grade. And then phase four would be building construction, utility installation, site feature installations, just paving. And uh, once the landscaping has been installed, the land has been seeded and we have full stabilization, then all perimeter controls would be removed. And with that, we'll move into the landscaping plan, and I'll turn it over to Philip Argo with WNA Engineering. Hey, can I ask a quick question about the basins oh, yeah. in the front? And you said, how you, are those cleanable underneath? The there? sediment basins or yeah. the uh, attenuation system? Uh, I guess you call them the well, the on the right side, in the east side of the building, the big, I guess, under the parking lot, the the big. Do you call them ba basins? I'm not sure what you're. Right. So, so would it be this feature that we're looking no, at? No, the, the other one. The other one. Oh, the other one. Yes. Yeah. So these, these are, all they are, are five foot diameter HTP pipe and you service them through manholes and in the operation and maintenance manual, there's a whole section on how frequently these should be serviced, how they should be serviced. And it's all done in accordance with the stormwater, uh, Connecticut stormwater manual. And there's a whole section for underground detention, um, maintenance and cleaning. So essentially they go in and they, they jet it out and then use a vacuum truck to suck out any sediment that gets in there. And the, the whole point of the hydrodynamic unit would be to intercept any pollutants or floatables and suspended solids prior to getting into there so that you don't have a failure and it operates 
on a long-term basis as, as it was intended to. Mm, okay, interesting. Uh, I have a question. Uh, now, this, this is the same design as before, or are you changing this hydraulic design? I'm, I'm trying to understand. You went through an intricate dis description here, and I looked at some of your sheets. It's pretty involved. So how does this compare to what you had before? Are there any changes? Uh, there are some changes. It's not significant. The, the biggest change, I would say, is removing all of the, and here, let me uh, switch back to here. So in the previous application, we had a large system on the western side of the building. Now that's been removed. It's all landscaping. There isn't as much hardscape. We don't have runoff. You, you can't get water uphill. Um, so we've moved everything to the eastern side of the site. And we aren't doing any infiltration with our system like we were in the previous one because we have this retaining wall here, which we want to ensure that we're not introducing water to the rear of the retaining wall because that promotes failures. So in the new application, instead of having two systems, one to the west, one to the east, we have a single retention system to the east, but we are still discharging to the same connection point as before. So we haven't significantly changed the design. We've just essentially rearranged it to address a new layout of the site. Yeah, we, we received a memo from um, our uh, town planner uh, that highlighted, I don't know, 30 or so different items. A lot of them, I think, were engineering review items. Have you seen that memo? And uh, have those been addressed in this new design? So we did actually receive those this afternoon. It was at about 1.30, so we didn't quite have enough time to uh, respond to them. But I did run through them all, and um, none of them will require a, any major redesign to this site. They, they can all be addressed. And a lot of the information was included in the submitted documents. And there's a lot of material, it's probably tough to pick out. But yeah, we, we can very easily address those comments and would be happy to work with the town to address those. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, and uh, if there aren't any other questions, I'll turn it over to Philip. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, for the landscaping, um, our, our goal was um, first of all to meet. Excuse me. Uh, could you just could you just identify yourself by name and address for the record? I'm sorry. Yes, my name is Philip Argo. I'm. Uh, uh, reside at 148 Clouds Creek Road in uh, Crawford, Georgia. Okay. So our goal uh, was primarily to uh, uh, focused on uh, meeting uh, the town's code requirements for the landscaping, in particular the uh, uh, per perimeter uh, tree plantings um, and in combination with uh, the existing trees that are on the site, uh, primarily on the, the western um, portion of the site, uh, with the exception of a couple of oaks along Arrow Road, uh, we added to that uh, with a number of um, uh, evergreen and uh, deciduous tree plantings uh, per code. Um, also moving around to the uh, eastern um, uh, the southeastern corner of the, the property uh, that abuts the um, existing residence to the west. Um, I'm sorry, southwestern corner of the property. Um, uh, we provided the um, buffer plantings um, that were required per code and, um, and some additional plantings against the building um, along that side. And then uh, you know, continuing around the south side, uh, additional perimeter tree plantings. Um, and then in the parking lot uh, along the, uh, the front of the building, uh, we have the required um, parking lot uh, tree plantings as well as um, uh, shrub plantings to screen the, um, the uh, parking from um, view from Berlin Turnpike and, um, and some screening from Arrow Road uh, for that area. 
and then the the remainder of the the plantings are are just uh, uh, purely aesthetic and uh, just um, enhanced landscaping around the building. Thanks, Philip. And um, oh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Don. Um, can I ask the landscape architect a couple of questions, or should I wait till later? No, no. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Dominic Caruso, I'm, um, a consultant to the planning uh, department. Um, the I have a question on the the um, cedar trees that you're going to use the eastern cedar as the buffer? Yes, sir. Um, I know you gave a caliper. I, I just want to, you know, um, that I think you need to identify them as six to seven feet high on um, planting. Certainly, uh, we can do that. Uh, yeah. Um, that, that's not a problem. And I understand you know, I understand why you use that, that the cedars and, and, uh, you know, I'm just, they, they do get kind of, you know, squall, squally, let me put it that way. Um, but, but they do retain their, uh, the slope, et cetera. Um, so I think your plan is, is pretty good. You know, it's very good as a matter of fact, um, overall. Um, and I wonder why you just left the area for the, uh, you know, the uh, old parking area that you're eliminating on the western side of the building, why you just left that as a field and not not uh, planted at all. I thought that might be a good space for to add some substantial trees. Um, um, uh, yeah, we, we can certainly take a look at that. Uh, sure. Um, have no problem eliminating uh, a lot of that grass and um, uh, adding some trees in into that area. Yeah, yeah, you know, some, something of substantial nature. And if you can mix them, you know, with the evergreen as well as the deciduous, I think I think that that that's just an opportunity area. I, I think, and um, and that will go to um, um, you know, minimize the wall. You know that that uh, frontage, sure. that that wall. You know that's a that's a. I, I like the indentation on that they put on it, that the architect put on it. But it, it's still no matter what you do, you know, you, you dress it up and everything. It's still a wall, and and the plantings will help um, minimize that effect, especially from above. Uh, and that's you know that residential uh, spot that you're talking. Uh, uh, structure is higher obviously than, than there so I, I think if you can do that and I'm not talking about a lot you know I'm just talking to I don't know I'll leave it up to you but that you know just to uh, reach that that goal and Perfect. also and talking about that wall I don't know you know how it is when you're looking at a site uh, something always sticks out to you and it, it's that wall um, just to let the commission know, and, and we'll get into that, I'm sure, with the architect, um, that this is just a blank wall, um, that, that that western um, side of the building. So um, there is an opportunity to do some trellis work on, on the wall and, and uh, you know, some, some uh, crawling plants or something, you know, along that line, too. If you could look into that, too, that would be appreciative. Certainly, we'll be, be happy to take a look at that. And Mr. Chairman, um, the other, there was, there was a question about the frontage. Um, the regulations state that the shortest, the shortest frontage, the short, when on a corner lot that, that the, uh, the frontage along the, uh, the shortest frontage along the, the street line is considered the front yard. So being that uh, the lot width on um, Russell Road it is the short one as opposed to, uh, um, as opposed to uh, with Arrow Road, um, that's why that's where the frontage counts. Okay, 
Well, yeah, I mean, that probably makes a lot of sense in a rectangular residential right. subdivision, but here it just seemed kind of odd. Right, it does. I, I looked that up a couple of times, but thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Can I just follow up on question, uh, Dominic? You, you're yeah. talking about the wall. That's on the, the retaining wall that's on the, I guess it's no. the east side. Is, which no, wall? I'm, I'm sorry. No, I wasn't clear. The building wall. Oh, the, the building wall. Yeah, the actual yeah, that. That's what I'm talking about. I got you. All right. That yeah. makes sense. All right. Okay. Yeah, the uphill wall. Thanks. And uh, then I'll turn it over to Truman Gee with Interplan to talk about the uh, lighting plan. Okay. All right. Can you all hear me? My name is Truman G. I'm the architect uh, for the project, and I live at 101 Heritage Circle, Ormond Beach, Florida. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, first we'll talk about the site lighting plan. In general, Safe Store would prefer to not have a typical site lighting set up like maybe a, a Walmart or a grocery store might with a bunch of light poles out in the parking lot. They typically do all their lighting on the building itself. We we do that with full cutoff fixtures. They are their wall packs that shine down and sometimes we use them that shine up. But this case, I think we all just have them shining down because the nature of the use of the facility is not where we have shoppers coming and going, particularly much after dark. And if people do come here after dark, it's to access their use their uh, unit and get to their stuff. So they literally would go to this uh, loading bay area, it, which would be well lit, but the parking lot itself will be fairly dark and ver very dark actually, but we, we just don't see the need to light up the parking lot because it's not used for that kind of thing at night. The, the office is not open for the most part after dark. So there'd be no need to come and park and go to the office to see anybody. So that's why what you're seeing has no light poles at all. Now, I feel like you know, if you want, if you insist on some light poles, we could add some, but they just prefer not to for the long-term maintenance and operation of the facility. It just seems to be not necessary for what they do here. We did add some lighting to this building for the, I don't guess y'all can see my uh, cursor, but along that north side of the building there, there is an egress path. And we did add some small, uh, yeah, towards the front there, we did add quite a few lights along that side because there is an egress path out of an emergency exit out of the building. And so we've lit that all the way back around to the front, to the parking area. And then the rest of the light would be pretty much at that loading bay area at the uh, southwest corner, southeast corner of the building, I'm sorry. Yeah, right there. That'd be the most heavily lit area of the site at night. Now, I don't know if y'all want to zoom in and see what those light levels are, because they do, um, they are quite bright. They're at, so you see, we got light levels of 25.8 foot candles there at the service entrance. That a lot of that is uh, we have down lights in that canopy, but we also have all that glass and a lit elevator lobby behind that glass that also contributes to that ambient lighting in that area. I don't think it'll be uh, obtrusive or obnoxious to any adjacent uh, uses or properties. Uh, it's kind of tucked back in the corner of our property. It is up above the commercial facility to the east and and completely invisible to that residential property to to the west of us. So. I don't know, that, that's pretty much the site lighting scheme. We did see a comment today, the 11th hour here, where somebody had asked us to add all adjacent light poles within 10 feet of our property line, I believe it was. Tim, was that what it said? And I would be glad to do that. I don't know if I have that information or not, but if I if we can get that information, we can certainly add that to this, to this site lighting plan. And the, the only light that would be within the 10 feet of our property would be if they have, you know, maybe some type of canopy light underneath the, the building for the convenience store. That convenience store is built right on the 10 foot line. So it may not even. But it's know, lower than this, right? It how is much lower. lower. Is it, how much lower? Uh, it's about 20 feet, I believe. The retaining wall is about 18 and then it drops so, another few feet. Unless their lights are on the roof, we're not going to really see them. They're not going to correct add much ambient lighting to our site at all. Our site it, by design is going to be fairly dark and that's our intention. So unless you guys have some more questions or comments, I'm going to assume that's okay. We don't have any lighting in the back towards that residential or that uh, south side at all. We have no lighting whatsoever. When we get to the building elevations in a minute, you will see the glass 
we have two kinds of faux windows in this building. There are there are one there's at the main entrance corner. We have full height glass with faux storage doors behind it, and that would be lit at night. The other faux windows scattered around the building are not lit at night, uh, other than whatever reflective light they might get from the from the outside. But they they are not lit. When we get to the building elevations in a minute, I'll show you what what I was talking about. What are what are the hours of operation of the building? Is it twenty four seven or is it limited? Well, that can vary, and I'm gonna let John speak to that. John, you know the building typical hours of operation would be standard business hours, you know, between eight and six when somebody will actually man the office. Uh, the doors are key code or uh, you know uh, punch card access to get in. Some of our units are 24 uh, seven, but you know, for the most part, uh, it's like you know, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., something like that. I mean, um, you know, we can limit access to those hours, uh, but, but that access is someone coming and driving up to the door. They have their own code. They come in, they go get their stuff or put their stuff in and then they leave. Uh, the door, the actual office itself is between you know, standard business hours, eight to six. The, the only question I would have on this uh, need for additional lighting is, is safety. And I, I think Richard's question is, you know, what kind of operation do you expect in the dark hours? And is there potential that you're gonna get more than one or two vehicles and someone has to park in the dark area and try to cross through dark space to get to, you know, unload their stuff. and it's a liability for you and it's a safety issue for, for the people. So that's the kind of question I think I'd like to have you guys address. Yeah, we don't, we don't, Mr. Peter, we don't think that there's any issue with that. I mean, you know, if you look at our trip counts on a daily basis, to be quite honest with you, we could probably get by with five parking spaces in the, and then the loading spaces. I mean, we rare, we, we have, you know, one or two employees there during the day. And rarely is there more than three or four cars there um, if ever. So the employees won't be there after six o'clock or five o'clock. Uh, and then, you know, all those front parking spaces are getting uh, adequate lighting. Uh, and then the, the loading areas are getting adequate lighting as well. So, I mean, we don't, we don't perceive any issue. And this is, I mean, like I said, we've done, we've got 30 of these, uh, if at all possible, we, we, we stay away. We don't, we don't wanna put any more light pollution out there than possible. Like I said, we wanna be good community members as well. Uh, which is why we we limit uh, to what we what we really believe we need, uh, and there's no reason to put any additional lighting out there, in our opinion. All right, thank you. Sure. Yeah, I mean, and, and frankly, that's kind of where I, where I was why I was asking is, you know, do you really need 26 foot candles there if nobody's going to be there? You know, at 3:15 in the morning. You mean it's the loading dock doors? Yeah. No, we don't. And that really wasn't by design. That's just the lights we usually use. That's the way it worked out. We can cut that back if you think we need to, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't need it. We don't we don't need to have that many there. Um, no. Well, no, we don't. well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking you don't need to have that. You might not need to have that many there at hours when people aren't going to be going there because, you know, and this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves. I mean, it, if you're if you're on the Berlin Turnpike, you look up at the the 7-Eleven, which I think is kind of higher compared to the road than any of us thought it was going to look like, you know, when it gets installed. And then your place is up above that and going up into the sky another 40 feet. Um, you know, just kind of the whole the whole appearance of you know the Emerald City on the hill in the middle I don't, of the night. The Acropolis. <laughs> well, well, let's let, 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 let me let me address yeah. that really quickly. I think that those lights are underneath that canopy, aren't they, Truman? They, well, we have lights under the canopy, and then right. we have one one wall pack above the canopy. Yes. Yeah, so the lights that are generating the excessive uh, number are only under the yeah. canopy. Somebody right. get to the. Okay. Somebody flipped to the uh, night shot of the building that I have pulled up on my screen, that one. So that's what you're looking at. That's what it looks like. Yeah, and see that bright area? He's right. It's right underneath that. It's canopy. underneath the building. All that light from the elevator lobby out that big glass door. But when have, that's still a pretty dark corner of the building. The bright corner is on this main entrance corner. 
Yeah, okay. I, we do need some light in that corner. I mean, um, you know, just from a security, uh, from a police standpoint, you know, uh, um, if there's any any problem in the back there, you know, we we want the you know the police to see, be able to see that back corner from from the street, um, if they can. So yeah, just, there's a down line. And I, I think corner. you got enough. I, I I think you you know, as long as you can light it up from that standpoint, I I think that's a good idea. Good. Yep. Thank you. Okay. That's as nice as the board. <laughs> like i live there so if you're ready i can move into the discussion about the building architecture itself sure that'd be Se great segue that if you can fast forward to the elevation or to the uh really i'd rather go to the 3d renderings oh sure and truman did you want to did you want well, me to just go through some of the changes or do you want to well that's a quick comparison of what was approved in 2017 versus what we're proposing now mm -hmm. which i think we certainly think is a substantial improvement. First of all, it, it really will not even look like a storage facility. You don't see any other than behind glass. And there, by the way, I want to point out that all those storage, okay, see the big, tall four-story glass on the right. That is what you were seeing in that night shot. We'll get to again in a minute. That's lit all the time. All these other faux windows also have a faux storage door behind them. Yes, but they're not lit at night. So they'll kind of go away at night. Um, Okay. But all of these are faux storage doors. You will never see a door open. You will never see grandma's boxes of stuff. It's just, it's just kind of a, an image. But it's you're not truly seeing to the storage a function of the building, unlike the old one where it had the potential for right. built plumbing supply to have an open door there with trucks and stuff. And we really, it's just not obviously a storage facility uh, from the aesthetic we've put together here. Good. So, so that that's a comparison. Now, I'd like to go straight on through to the renderings, if we could. Um, so, basically, what we it's a it's a stone veneer building on the first floor, um, all the way around, and then a couple different colors and shades of stucco above. Probably going to be um, exterior insulated finish system, EFAS, ice, whatever people call it, but. Uh, which does not require expansion joints, but we're using a lot of expansion joints and color changes to give it a pattern and a and a, a grid around the building to give it some design sense and not just big blank panels of stucco. Um, and then there there's a little bit of metal on the building, which would be the canopies. There's a big L-shaped canopy there at the main entrance and then smaller canopies at the emergency exit doors and the loading dock doors. Those would be out of uh, colored uh, aluminum or steel. But the rest of this building is primarily stucco. Uh, it, there is a little bit of metal panels in between those storefront glasses you see there at that main tower corner. One thing I also wanted to point out, looking at this view right here, even though you're seeing four stories, by, by building code definitions, this is a three-story building with a basement. And therefore, it will be a uh, type 2B construction. It will be fully sprinklered and fire alarmed, but, but it is not, by building code, a four-story building. It is a three-story building with a basement just and not that okay. that really matters for, for y'all's basis of a review and approval but for the, the building official that will mean a lot later oh. and there you can see uh, one more thing i wanted to point out that these are not the latest renderings and i apologize uh we did change them from the from the previous hearing the only difference being that this is going to be you know safe store is the developer and the owner life storage will be the uh, tenant the operating company and their doors are yellow, about the same color as that yellow in their sign there. Um, I don't know. I, I do have a rendering pulled up with the yellow doors instead of green. It's a subtle yellow. It's not a bright canary yellow. I don't think it'll make a fundamental difference to the overall effect of the building, but they will be all yellow doors. And I, like I said, I have a rendering open if you want me to push it, if I share. But if not, just understand. Even go to the night scene and you'll see. Can you go for? Yeah, see, those would all be yellow doors, pretty much the same colors that yellow in the life storage sign. And I want you to also notice how at nighttime, the other panel colored panels go away uh, behind those other faux windows. And all you're going to see is this one bright corner here. And that's the northeast corner? Correct. Yep. Yeah. okay. Mr. Chairman, George Oracle here. Uh, 
I was concerned yeah. when I saw some of the renderings uh, that the building was a little bit too dark, but you bring out the daylight one, it, it looks okay to me. And, yeah, the, uh, the lamp I didn't, care, I don't, I didn't kids care what the design review said, but uh, you know, that they approved it. But I thought it was a little dark, but this rendering here looks very good that you just threw up. So well that's that's um, that's a difference in the two <coughs> rendering programs we use. And this one here has the ability to be more realistic and account for the sun. The the colored two two-dimensional elevations are not very accurate color rendition because they are yeah. they're just color applied with Photoshop to a two-dimensional without taking sun angles into account. See, these actually have shadows and sun angles and things, and it's a much more realistic. It is um basically a, a three-tone gray, uh, a dark gray or almost black for the cap around the top and some of those bands, but then two tones of lighter gray make up the, the bulk of the rest of the building. And then the, the stone around the base is a dark charcoal black, charcoal gray stone around the perimeter, the base. And then in some areas we have pulled it up high as well, just for effect, uh, just, just to dress the building up a little bit. I like the yeah. idea of the yeah. yellow in the window showing through and even the railing. Uh, it adds a nice lighter touch to the building and right. uh, brings out the, the brightness of the day. I Sometimes that New England winters are kind of dark right now. And, uh, you know, it's a good example of why this might be helpful. And then the corner, well, the, like corner the corner part of the entrance is, is well lit and uh, Designed to show up, and I, I think that's good. I'm I'm done with my. Yeah, I mean, it looks um, like the. Yeah. Good, George. Thank you. Oh, what do you want to say, Mr. Chairman? No, it looks like the, but, the sun is coming up in the north on this. Rendering, <laughs> judging by where it might be is. now. That. <laughs> I may have to go talk to my rendering artist about that. Yeah. Denise, Denise, I had a quick question. Has the fire marshal reviewed this? Um, plan or this site plan with the lack of that back driveway do we do they have any concern with not having access with trucks in the back of the building with a without a pavement good question uh the fire yeah. marshal has reviewed the plan and he does not have any additional comments okay all right i think the arrow road will get a fire truck close enough to that back um I think you're right. Yeah, and I think the nature of the occupancy of the building probably has something to do with it too. I mean, people aren't going to be living in there. And it is yeah, fully sprinklered, and we will have a um, a fire department connection up near the front entry by by the drive where the fire truck drive would come in. There is a fire department connection. I don't know exactly where, but Tim might. But it's fully sprinklered building, so in a perfect world, you wouldn't need to get a fire truck that close to it anyway. <clears throat> Is that where your fire department connection is right there? Yeah. Okay. yeah there's a Siamese connection right okay. between the right. fire connection. Good location. Yeah. Good. Good question, Dave. I had written that one down. Yeah. No, we appreciate the the renderings because I mean the you know the packet printed out in black and white and it looked pretty uh pretty bland, but uh, the variety of colors is is appreciated. Rich, yeah, Dave. Yeah, hey, uh, again, I was gonna. Ask, is there any chance he has any type of rendering from like the view of the gas station from Berlin Turnpike in front of it? Get some sense with that wall. I don't think I do have one. I could. Mm -hmm. um, we could. I mean, if you don't have it, babe, just curious how that big wall looks going on Berlin Turnpike. Going. I love the building. I think the whole thing looks great. I'm just, you know, it's. Uh, it will look a little different from Berlin Turnpike. But yeah, sure. looks great yeah. what you have. Yeah. Mr. David, I think yeah. a lot of times what we do is enhance the landscaping on that backside and plant those trees yeah. taller if we can. You yeah. know, break up that wall as much as possible. Um, I mean, we're certainly willing to do that. I can get Phil to take a look at that. And, and no, it's not the big deal. I just curious if you have something. I think I think the building looks great, but it's like anything I should put a Sitco station in front of it. It looks a little different. <laughs> sure. No, and I, I remember that question being one that we did discuss at the original yeah. application because it was, you know, it was a single application for the the two different uses. And, you know, the, the idea of kind of the, the stacked 
construction of the two different things with the retaining wall in there, you know, the 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 storage building did look kind of imposing if you're taking the perspective of someone standing on the Berlin Turnpike, um, you know, and we talked about, you know, trees or something in front of it, but I think those would have undermined the retaining wall. Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of came to grips with, with the fact that there is significant topography in that area. Um, you know, frankly, this building looks better than I recall the last one being. No, it looks great. You know, the only thing, Rich, I, I'll kind of add what you added. For me, minimal light, minimal lighting's best. Whatever they need minimal for security, because again, going down Berlin Turnpike at 10 o'clock at night, you hate to see this big lighted tower on the hill. Not to say I want to take away from what you have, but that's probably not the best look. But it's, it's a, you know, for it's a beautiful building. So it'll add a lot to that area. It's nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't have any Qualms about them putting enough in there to keep everybody safe and to identify that's it. That's the building. That's all I would do. Yeah. But, yeah, but to run it like it's daytime all night long is kind of a little much. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, can we can we see that western elevation? The west elevation. The you mean back, the the basically the, the blank wall that you yeah. were referring to? Yeah. yeah, the rendering on that. Do you have a rendering on that, uh, architect Truman? I believe I do, but I don't know that it's in the package that's in front of y'all. Let me see. No, we we have the materials plan, which is up now in the in the upper image. Um, and Truman, if you do have a, a I don't seem to, to have. To no, I do not okay. have a three D. Uh, version from that backside. I have one because this was developed in a model. So I can right. certainly uh, have some cut and issued tomorrow, but I don't no. have it pulled up here and formatted for us to view. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that that's necessary, Truman. Uh, I just wanted to show it. That's where I was thinking of having some trellises on that wall. If you see, yeah. there's no, there isn't any, um, yeah. That's actually where I was talking about the trees helping guys. I'm sorry, I got a little turned around a second ago. Right. Can, can somebody put that landscape plan back up? Let me take a look at that with y'all. So we're talking about the wall to the to plan left right now, right? Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we got you know we got four really big trees there uh, that we're putting in, and and several smaller ones. I mean, we can add a couple of trees in that area. Um, we can add a couple of cross uh, from that area. Again, you know, those trees are really going to knock knock that elevation down. I mean, you're talking about um, trees. And it's that, really only two to two and a half stories tall from that side. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's two. It's two and a half story building. Yeah. And again, uh, that's why you you see where you have your indentation right in the middle of the building there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was just like, if if we put some growth on that wall right there, I, I'm not talking about any, you know, I'm talking about maybe three or four lines going up on that. I think with the trees that you have in front, I think that may make a difference. I, let, let us research it. I don't like, sure. I, mean, I, I, I don't like the idea of putting vegetation on that material. I think that that is a... Okay. It's a it, it's not a good application for a a, a, a clinging vine or a, a vine with tendrils to be attaching to that that ephus material. It's going to cause it to deteriorate faster. I'm afraid. I would rather supplement the landscaping back there. Either make those trees taller, add another tree in that area out of the gate. Uh, All right. Well, we'll that. talk to you. Yeah, I I I agree with you on the ephus. Um, yeah. yeah, and you don't want to be nailing anything in there or anything on that line either. But I, we, we already talked about about that that field area with your landscape architect, and he he had indicated that he would look into that about putting some substantial uh, planting in there. So sure. that that would help. That would help because then you would have the you wouldn't have a lineup on the on a blank wall. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. no problem at all. Yeah. Um, and, and we can we can add some bigger trees in there, you know, four or five, four or five more trees, those three inch caliper trees. It's not an issue. There you go. Can someone just point that field area so 
it's easily understood what you see the hash doing. mark on that. See the hash mark. Yeah, yeah. Tim, can you just run your? Uh, yeah, yeah, right there. All right, all right, all right. got it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. That had been parking in the prior application. Right. Hmm. Bill, that along with you... the buffer, I think, would be really. It, it, it really enhanced the whole site, as a matter of fact. Philip, any reason why we can't put five or six more trees in there? No, not at all. Uh, in yeah. fact, we'll we'll eliminate that uh, that grass and um, and just uh, yep, done. Put let's, some let's oaks in there. Let's get let's get five or six more trees in there and uh, and make it happen. Okay, some and hardwood that, too. Uh, yes, sir. Included in that file. Yep. Yeah. No, there there'll be oaks. Most likely, yep. yeah. Oh, and not to not to belabor this too much, but as you do go up Arrow Road, the topography climbs significantly. Right. As you can see, you've got that building sits yeah. way down. Right. So right. if you remember, the the top of the building was the very top of the building with the parapet included is at like three hundred four, and this residence is sitting, you know, around two eighty eight already. So right. there's um, a the topography chain that will help. Mr. Chairman, George here. Yes, George. Uh, yep. Speaking of uh, the top of the building, uh, there is some visibility of that maybe from up the hill. Uh, uh, do they need parapets up there because of, uh, see, they don't have air conditioning in there, do they? Yeah, I can speak to that. We do have air conditioning, but it's what's called split systems. Mm -hmm. So all we have on the roof would be the condenser units. They're only about two feet tall. They do sit up off the roof on a bit of a rack, but we don't have those big boxy, what's called a rooftop air conditioning unit like okay. you're used to seeing on a commercial building. So, and we do have some parapets. We've kept them to a minimum just to try to keep okay, the building height as low parapets, as possible. Short parapets with the two footers is not a bad problem. And we try to keep the units themselves at least 25 or 30 feet back from the edge so that even then you have an advantage of an angle of view, you know, and I, I just really doubt that you're going to see any air conditioning units uh, on this roof. Okay, that's all I'm concerned with. And that's Thank all you. that's up there. There's nothing else up there. Yeah, I mean, and you, those don't make the same volume of noise as the other stuff either. No. They don't make any noise at all. All the noise is inside in, in the air handler. And those okay. are hung in our quarters inside the building. All right. Thank you. I guess we've derailed your presentation. Um, is there <laughs> is there anyone that, that hasn't gone yet or? I, I just had one more thing to mention in regards to the letter that we did receive. Uh, and yes, there were upwards of 30 comments that were provided, but the vast majority of them were, you know, simple requests for additional notes and, you know, just display information that we already have. There were a few minor technical ones that will not have a large impact on the layout and design of this. And uh, if there were a motion made on this, we would respectively request that it could be included as a uh, condition of approval kind of, and there was one on the previous application that read, um, I've got in front of me, uh, subject to the submission of approval of the revised plans based on the town engineer and memo dated in the previous comment letter was June 15th, 2017. Something in the lines of that would be much appreciated. Of course okay yeah i mean that, that that would have been one of our questions before we closed the hearing was whether you had issues with any of the any of the staff comments that we needed to finesse yeah no i, th I think they're all reasonable and we can definitely work towards addressing them yeah. uh okay. george oracle here uh, uh yep I'd, I'd like to congratulate the developer and the architects for not getting our town engineer concern with off-site drainage. He seems to be okay with what you're proposing, including the limited amount probably that goes into the main line out in the street. So uh, you ought to be congratulated because likely our town engineer has been following those federal statutes on every development and uh, are kind of running headlong into the proposals. Uh, with uh, off-site drainage, or uh, he didn't want to see any of it. Am I am I exaggerating, Mr. Chairman? What I've been hearing? No, you're you're stating your opinion, but I um, I I think we're all we're all hearing what you're saying. 
Uh, the, the fact that they have a significant reduction in the impervious coverage, I think, probably helped satisfy any of the concerns about our MS4 compliance. Yep. Well, Rich, I'm good with what I see, so whatever you guys want to do. Okay. Um, yeah, does anybody else on the commission have any questions for any anyone who's been making the presentation? Rich, Tony. A quick question, if you can refresh my memory, can you tell me what the uh, build out date is? How long does it take to construct this? Number of units you're going to have? And if you have an estimate what the monthly rental rate would be? Is that for John? I'm sorry, say that one more time. <clears throat> you can tell me how long it takes to build this structure? Yes, sir. I mean, we're typically, uh, we're performing a 12 month build as a general rule. Sometimes it takes a month or two longer, sometimes a month or two less, depends on when we catch the weather and, and you know, we're building in the Northeast. So obviously we deal with a little more up there than we do in the South, but, um, uh, and then we project about a three, three year, three to four year lease up to get it full from that point in time. So we'll be in and out in a year, 14 months max, uh, but a year is our goal. How many units will you be having? It's probably about 800. They're usually somewhere between eight and 900, I think. Do you have an yeah. estimate of what the rental rate would be? No, sir. I mean, it, it varies market to market so much. We depend on our uh, partners, life storage or extra space, whoever's going to run it to kind of help set those initial rates. I can tell you that we're usually on the top end of the market with those rates uh, because we are one of the nicer facilities uh, that'll, that, that you'll see. Uh, but it, it does vary pretty substantially. So I, I don't know. I can't speak to that exactly. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. Yes, sir. Tony, how Good. much do you think this will be assessed for? A billion dollars, George. A billion. <laughs> Come on. Please, 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 please a skosh under a billion. I don't know that we've performed that. <laughs> All right. Um, does, that, does anybody else on the commission have questions for any anybody uh, on the applicant team? All right. Um, if not, could I ask that we stop sharing so that I can kind of take stock of any members of the public that wish to comment because this is a public hearing. Um, you know, I'll open it up. Are there any members of the public who wish to comment on this application or have any questions? Okay, any members of the public? Going once. All right. If not, uh, any final? Well, I, I guess one one thing um, you alluded to in the beginning was um, removing any of the conditions of approval from the last time that aren't applicable to this one. Um, the I didn't see the conditions of approval in our packet, so I don't know what they are, and I don't therefore know whether any of them are still applicable. So I'll kind of rely on um, Dom and Denise to let us know whether uh, there are any conditions, you know, above and beyond satisfaction of uh, the items raised in the staff memo and uh, the changes in the landscaping on the western side that we talked about tonight that should be incorporated to, into any potential motion. Denise, I, I didn't see any really that, um, you know, the, the, the last, of, they had a waiver to locate the parking in the front yard. I don't, I don't know that that's applicable to this. I don't think that there are, I'm just, I'm going to pull up the approval right. letter right now and, and just make sure. Yeah. I mean, if now you're saying the front yard's up on Russell road, then. <laughs> Well, there's actually two front yards it's, it's right. on, a, on a corner lot, so. Yeah, I'm getting out my electron microscope here, it doesn't look like they have any parking inside that front yard no. on this, on this plane. The other, and the other waiver was a reduction of parking requirement from 37 to 32. That went away when they subdivided it, I think. 
because that in I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Well, I think there was there was a probably a minimum parking requirement for right. You know, the warehouse or storage, and they demonstrated at that time, you know, that there was not a need for the required number of spaces. So, how many are they proposing this time? Seventeen, I believe. Right. Yeah, I think. Um, the the last approval included the uh, um, convenience store gas station. You right. know, it, it was it was a package. Yeah. Um, and so now this application, because you know, the, the land has been subdivided, and this application just deals with the is self storage. So you don't have the parking for the. Um, um, uh, gas station included in this in this application and yeah, I, I, mean, do, it was, it was, I do believe that the yeah. parking meets exceeds the parking required for for self-storage on this site i don't know denise did you find any way other waivers no, so I'm looking at it right now. Um, it's really specific to. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one party space for every 100 storage units plus one space for 250 square feet of accessory office space. We amended that in December of last year. So, you know. Um, they have 800 units, that's eight parking spaces. I don't know how much office yeah. square footage they have. They have more than a, than than the requirement is, I can tell you that. So there, there was okay. a waiver granted um, to reduce the required number of spaces uh, from, from 37 to 32. 32 right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think. But then, think. yeah, then like a year ago, we basically redid most of the self storage regulations after we had the moratorium. So um, it and doesn't the, look like they need a waiver this time at all. And then it looks like the rest of the conditions were specific to um, the comments from the town engineer, which are different um, in this application. And then there was a note about final details and plans uh, for the location of handicap parking uh, shall be approved by the building official. Um, and then something in terms of tree removal going to the Shade Tree Commission. Um, but I, I think that they've addressed the landscaping. Um, when I think those were trees in Arrow Road that we were concerned about them kind of right. taking they're protecting those trees on this plan. The two big ones. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah, so it doesn't sound like we have any stipulations or conditions that are going to be objectionable to anybody here. Um, I guess one last one last time, do members of the commission have any questions or comments for anybody on the applicant? Uh, team before we close the hearing. Mr. Chairman, again, I, I just have um, one other thing is I, I think we um, should add to any lease or um, we should be alerting the potential uh, people who are leasing units of our special restrictions on what they can do within that unit. Um, and it, they're pointed out in, in section 512 of our regulations. And it's like, um, if I can, uh, F says individual storage units shall not be used for residential office, retail workshops, studios, rehearsal areas. It, 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 it has a whole list of what, what it cannot be used for. And then uh, G points out accessory um, accessory uses such as rental office or rental or uh, of trucks, trailers, et cetera, uh, equipment and otherwise 
um, cannot or other uses not allowed in the zone cannot be used within the units. And um, they have um, electrical services, H is electrical services to storage units shall be uh, for lighting and uh, climate control only. No electrical outlets are permitted inside individual storage units. And then uh, they have this I is similar for plumbing. Um, and uh, J is all goods and property stored on self storage facility shall be contained within the building interior. Um, so well, what I'm suggesting is, I, I don't know, um, that, that 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 be given to each um, potential uh, renter of, of the of the units at the time they rent it. So I guess That's maybe we, I yeah, I mean, just kind of put it out there. Maybe we can approach it from the other side that the the applicant provides the town with a sample of their you know, <laughs> standard lease agreement, you know, to confirm that it complies with you know town zoning requirements. That's great. Does that work for, for the applicant? I don't foresee that as being an issue. I know that our lease agreements, again, we, we third party manage these. So they're, they're managed by these, um, you know, bigger companies and, and, and their agreements all have language in it dealing with that kind of stuff. So I have no problem handing, you know, handing those uh, leases over a copy of those over for you so if you want to make that a condition just that we provide a copy of the lease to the county happy to do that well richard yeah, I, I think that'd be good just so that we don't have people moving into these things i was going to say there goes my chance like <laughs> yeah. nice little boarding apartment for less yeah it excludes yeah. all of that type of stuff guys i mean they're <laughs> I mean, these, these guys these companies i mean i know it does happen when um privately uh, maintain and kind of run units, particularly older ones in some in some cases, but, you know, live storage, extra space, those guys, I mean, they don't mess around with that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's hey, pretty John, well. If I could, Truman here, if I could offer one thing, one caveat to that is you're right. There is no power ran throughout these, to these units at all, other than a light in the bigger ones. Right. But we do have one exception. We have one 10 by 10, 10 by 12 unit that we offer to the police, local police department. And that one is fully wired with electricity and data, yeah. so that these officers can go in there and um, use it kind of as a way station to plug in their laptop and do whatever they want to do. They don't always use it, but th th that one is wired. All the rest, it just wouldn't even be possible to provide them. If you look on our website, gentlemen, you'll see it's one of the other things we offer. In addition to offering three units per building uh, to charities, we 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 get in contact with your local police chief and find out if they'd like to have a police substation in our buildings. And if they are interested in doing that, we have that pre-wired and, and, you know, so that they can go in there, get out of the rain, get out of the weather, you know, get a cup of coffee and uh, be able to write a report or whatever. But it's actually a unit that's in the building. So if they decline the use of that, then we turn it into a unit. So Truman's right. right. The main office. Yeah, yeah it's, it's right behind the main office in every one of our buildings. All right. No, thanks for that. So Ryan, there, there is a the glimmer of hope for you there. You know? As long as you keep the hope alive, I'm here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, can I respond to just yes. one question you had? Um, it, you asked if um, the applicant took an issue with any of the, the comments that we received today from the town engineer. And um, I did provide an email response with respect to just one comment, and that was comment number two. And I think Mr. Caruso and Ms. Bradley saw that. And, and that was... Um, suggesting that the the yardage uh, uh, fronting Arrow Road uh, be labeled as a side yard. Uh, but uh, this commission, when uh, approving the subdivision a few years ago for this property, actually imposed a condition that that actually be changed from a side yard to a front yard. So uh, it is a front yard. And I know we've discussed that tonight. So I just wanted to, to make that clear. OK, no, I appreciate that because we learned a lot more about front yards yeah well unless there are any questions uh, you know thank you so much for your time this evening um uh, we you know respectfully request that you uh, approve this application subject to you know some of the conditions that we've discussed this evening and 
I know that Safe Store is uh, excited to become a member of the community. So thank you very much. No, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, last call. Any any other questions or comments from anybody on the commission? Any members of the public? If not, uh, would someone like to make a motion to close the public hearing? Make a motion to close the public hearing, Mr. Chairman. George. Second. Okay. Okay, motion by George, second by Ryan to close the public hearing. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Um, all right. Now we'll move on to the application itself. Um, Mike, I'm not sure when you got here and I had seated all three of the alternates, so I'll, I'll keep them seated if that's all right with you. I hope you're not offended. No objection. Um, okay, you, you can talk on the next one. Um, does anyone have any, uh, want to make a motion for um, discussion purposes here? Mr. Chairman George here, I'll make a motion to approve with the conditions as already discussed. Okay, and I guess just so that we're clear, it's the, uh, Satisfactory resolution of the 33 items in John Mills memo dated today, uh, with the exception of number two, which we've already addressed, um, request that the operator provide the town with a copy of its sample storage agreement to confirm compliance with um, town zoning regulations. The landscaping on the western side will include uh, eastern cedars that are at least six or seven feet high uh, and that some additional landscaping be placed in the former western parking area um, and that riprap be installed in the drainage swales in the areas that uh, that we discussed this evening. Uh, was there anything else? Sounds good. I'll second that. All right. Motion by George, seconded by Peter. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you for your efforts. We very appreciate much. it. We appreciate Thanks it, guys. Much. Good luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, next item, 4.1, request by 24 Maple Street, 24 LLC, uh, for an extension of time for progress on construction at 24 Maple Street, of all places. Uh, application <laughs> number 2028-19Z. Um, I see Peter Alter has turned his visibility on here. Um, now we're in trouble. <laughs> nice. Good evening. Good evening. Good to, good to see you, Peter. Nice to see all of you. Um, this is uh, a request to uh, have an extension for uh, a year until January 7th of 2023 uh, to move forward with the construction of the restaurant that was approved on the southwesterly corner of Maple Street and Middletown Avenue. We have been to the Historic District Commission at its meeting on December 14th and secured an extension of uh, that commission's approval uh, to mirror the same dates that we're requesting here. Uh, our client has several restaurants and is very much in tune with the troubles that restaurants have had over the past two years with uh, the pandemic such as it is. Um, he was preparing to start uh, construction and then stopped again tells us that uh, in 2020, his business was about 50% of what it had been in his restaurants. Uh, this past year, it got up to 80%. And now, of course, it's dropped off again. So he's asking for 
uh, this additional time to uh, begin construction of the restaurant. There are no changes to the plan that was approved either by the Historic District Commission or this commission uh, originally. Oh, that's good news. I was I was worried actually that it was getting peeled back. Nope. No, nope. that's great. I think, uh, yeah, I, mean, you know, I, I thought the DOT had concerns with access on to Maple Street, especially Westwood. Whatever happened with that? To the best of my knowledge, Mr. Oikel, that that was resolved at the District 1 level. Um, I'd have to confirm that with our project engineer, but that was my understanding back uh, when this was originally approved. If I remember correctly, George, I think we had a discussion about, you know, the, the entries and exits of the of the lot. And we just said as long as the coordination is, you know, above board with the department and municipalities, I think we were we were willing to approve. Right. It's just that I understood that after our approval, they had concerns and uh I thought maybe it, they might even have enough concerns to stop use of the site, but apparently- Well, I don't, I don't know that there were concerns. I think it was just, please check with the department and make sure they're comfortable with it. But we're, we're good with everything we see is, is how we left it. Oh, oh either yeah, way. Yeah, that was, yeah, I mean, that, that was how we left it here at the commission level, but I, I think others might've had different views on the world. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about that tonight. Um, does anybody have any, uh, uh, you know, serious qualms about extending the uh, uh, the date by which they have to start construction? No, I mean, I think a year after the supposed next flu season makes a lot of sense. So, or not a year after, but a, a year what? puts us beyond that and. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Beyond what? This flu season? Who knows what that no, is? No, it'll be the the Sigma variant. <laughs> the Omega. That'll be the last one, though. So, all right. Uh, um, somebody want to make a motion here? <laughs> I make a motion make a to motion. approve. I'll second. All right. Ryan made the motion. Tony seconded it. Uh, any questions? Discussion? Not all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Thanks. Thank you, Thank Peter. You very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Peter. You too. Take care. Good to yeah. see you. All right. Next item on the agenda was something I asked to have put on here just so that we didn't lose sight of what was going on here. Um, you know, there were a month and a half into the moratorium, and I just wanted to make sure that we kept it on the agenda, you know, at least often enough to remind ourselves that we were supposed to be doing something about this. Um, Denise, I think you were going to talk about it at the department head meeting, you know, so that, um, you know, Bonnie and others could weigh in if they, you know, wanted to, you know, have town staff kind of take positions or you know provide input on this sort of thing do you did you have any feedback on that uh, so we did have the staff meeting this morning and i did discuss it and there are several um, different departments that are interested in participating in some kind of a working group or at least mm -hmm. providing uh, feedback to us um, so um, the police department, the board of ed, uh, the park and rec social services, um, and a few other departments had, had mentioned their interests. So, um, we gave them, uh, an initial deadline of January 11th to get us some comments in advance of the next town council meeting where it will be on their agenda for discussion. Can I, can I ask Good. how we're presenting like what the proposal is so like 
does everybody have like an understanding of what a cannabis establishment is or are they just assuming that it's like you know the the place on the turnpike uh, up up in smoke or there's a couple other places where it's just like you know your head shop your typical thing where you know you're I mean I to... think you know definitely in the conversation that I had with the department heads this morning um there is a little confusion in terms of the difference between medical and recreational, um, you know, what's permitted in the state and what um, is is currently, even though permitted, not necessarily available. Um, so um, I did let them know that I would provide them with information in terms of the regulations that we already have um, and some of how, you know, how other local towns are dealing with um, this. The police chief um, wants to meet early next week. Um, and, um, you know, I think, uh, being outside of the planning and zoning discussion, there is a little bit of uh, educational um, component to um, bringing in some other stakeholders to the conversation. Yeah, and I, I guess the reason for my initial sort of question is that like, I think there's a lot to be gained from having a business like this in town. I feel like a lot of people have like mis misconceptions of what we're talking about. You know, these places look like Apple stores. They're like ridiculous. And so it's not what people might be thinking. So I think, you know, maybe Denise and on your end of it, like as you're, as you're, portraying what we're actually talking about when it comes to a cannabis establishment like you know just having like some pictures of some of the existing ones that are in like states where it's legal um because I, I think they have mix where it's like there's a recreational but there's also like a medical component in the same building um mm -hmm. and like like i said they look like apple stores it's like it's a storefront it's not something where you know, you're just like walking up to a head shop or whatever. So, you know, I, I think, you know, I would, I would urge you to, to maybe portray it in a way and like find some comps that, you know, for what we're talking about bringing into the town, just, just so that everybody understands what it is, because I think that there might be a gap. Definitely. I, I, I mean, I think obviously some of the initial uh, responses were were um, pretty pretty hesitant to the idea, um, and um, um, so I ju I just think that there's a lot of money to be made on bringing a business like this into town, and I I just want to make sure that everybody's aware of what we're talking about as opposed to what they might be thinking about from you know. I mean I think it's also just really good to get some initial feedback and then have the the discussion with council because I think if if they're not supportive from the beginning you know and ultimately they're looking to just not allow for for the type of use then it's really fruitless for staff to go through the process of um, you know looking to how other towns are handling it um okay all right yeah, yeah i don't i don't want to i don't want to make you waste time and money effort obviously has the state has the state presented any case studies on you know other locations such as colorado massachusetts of stores what the general income you know stock and income is insurance rates you know just just actually what happens to an area that um, has one of these establishments? Because I know the confused driver collision in Massachusetts and other locations has exceeded farther than everyone ever thought it would. But I'm just wondering if they ever looked at it from the standpoint of, like he mentioned, money. What money does it give to our community? What is the cost for 
education of people. What is the cost for our police force? I'm just trying, I'm looking for a case study that someone's done for, you know, for a town to review in the state of Connecticut that says, this is, this is, these are three or four cases that took place somewhere in the United States. And, you know, take a look at it. Has anyone done that in the state government here? I just, I don't know. Well, I'm sure that, I'm sure that kind of evidence was provided to the folks who worked on putting the legislation together. It's just, yeah. I haven't, that's true. You know, I haven't, I, you know, I mean, I haven't found it. I haven't been given a copy of it. And I, you know, I'm having, I'm having this basically similar conversations to this with about a half a dozen of the towns that we do work for, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and everybody's kind of asking the same questions and, you know, the, the folks that are, you know, in the moratorium mode are all sort of feeling their way around in the dark um, in the sense of, you know, planning and zoning doesn't want to waste their time working on regulations. Yeah. You know, if the town council or board of selectmen wants to ban it or, you know, vice versa. Um, you know, yeah, and, I mean, I have no, to... I have no problem doing the research yeah. ultimately. Um, yeah, that's I've, the road I've, that I've, we um, want to go down, but I, I just, you know, if, if the feeling of the community is, is not to approve these outright, then, you know, I don't know yeah. why go through that effort. I know, I, I know earlier on I sent Peter some ones I found on the, on the car or the accident reports in Massachusetts, some other stuff in, in Colorado, but I don't, I don't, probably couldn't find it again. I'll look at my files. But no, I'm just interested because it is a, again, is it betterment for the community? It's a federally, it's against the law to possess it. And I mean, it's a drug. That's what um, my only concern is, what does it do for the benefit of the community? And that, that's, that's why I'm looking for other case studies that have been done. Oh, we can have the same discussion when the package store wants to come in. Yeah, I. That's I, yeah. I know. I know. The, I know what you're you're saying. We have how many of those in town? Yep. Are they is well? It one, because one less than we had a week ago, but <laughs> but a police officer can tell if you're drunk. Where most stuff I've read about is the saliva test goes back 30 days, so it can't be used in a court of law. So that that's where my concern. Is is it this stage? It's kind of an infant stage for police officers and enforcement, and that's just mainly my, you know, this is the beginning. I just want to make sure we're going in the right path. It's incredibly it. easy to see if somebody's high. Unfortunately, <laughs> anyway. we're not. Going to, unfortunately, we're not going to live in a bubble here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Newington, yeah. I, I guess, has already approved, right? Yes, Middletown, yes. I hear yeah. it as well. I mean, so, I mean, it's a question of do we want one? I think this town is allowed one by the population. Do we want one establishment in this town or not? That's right. It's not yeah. going to be like package stores. You're not going to have six yeah. or seven or whatever. Uh, we're allowed yeah. one. And yeah, I guess we have to decide if, if this town is willing to do that or not. We're not going to stop all the issues yeah. uh, that, yeah. that you're bringing oh, no, up. No, no, no. I know. I'm just from a design standpoint, in our design standpoint. I just wonder if there was anything that, you know, we could read. Well, if you, if if we want to, uh, if we want to go forward with this, as, as you know, as we're talking about it, um, we certainly can develop a regulation to design design it any way you know the town wants to i mean yeah. we could we can make it a super apple store i mean you know yeah. in the reg and make sure that that's the way it's going to be in the regulations i mean you know yeah. it's it's a matter of, of of what you know the commission wants as well as the council you know uh, are we going to go forward and and then we'll we could set our pens down and uh I could draw you pictures left and right on 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 how the regulations are going to look, you know, how mm -hmm. how buildings are going to look. So uh, you know that's it. So, but the the issue remains with the, the, the public officials on whether yeah. to go forward. Denise, George here. Uh, 
Go ahead, George. Hey, are you going to suggest that we and the council have an open public meeting on this this matter? Um, the council for, is for, having for a educational and information. I mean, all of these meetings are public meetings, right? Um, you know, the, the council meeting, they are setting it on their agenda uh, for the January 18th meeting. Oh, okay. um, and I think I think after that point, you know, in getting some of the initial feedback, um, we have a, a planning and zoning meeting the next evening and we can discuss that night how to proceed from there with uh, oh, okay. Okay. a working committee. Okay. No, I appreciate it. I mean, and, and I, I didn't mean that we needed to have the final discussion tonight. I just wanted it <laughs> on the agenda so that we could, you know, not get to the end of the moratorium and go, oh crap, we're at the oh, end yeah. of the moratorium. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, you know, in, in that case, because it's on the council for the next agenda, I'll just continue this for um, old business for next month or for, for two weeks from now. Okay, right. I appreciate that, thank you. And we also, that evening, it is a Wednesday night meeting um, because of the Monday holiday. Okay. And that Monday really is a holiday, unlike last Monday. That's right. <laughs> I was so mad too. All right. If there's nothing else. Um, do we want to move on to the uh, October 19th minutes? I read both, through both uh, minutes, Rich, and I can make a motion to approve both of them if you like. Unless, okay. George, has, unless George has corrections. Oh, you seconded already. Yeah, you already seconded it. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Yeah, I thought they were really good minutes. I just kind of regretted having to relive all of those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, detail, I think. So true. <laughs> all right. Um, so we still have not seconded. been able to find a recording secretary. Uh, they oh. did go through another round. Um, uh, so right now, our town clerk's office is accommodating the minutes. Um, if any of you know anybody who might be interested, the position is still open. <laughs> um, but well, otherwise, know, we're, we're, we're back. Um, we, we do still have a few um, to review next time. Well, the meetings are on YouTube and you can turn the auto captions on and just- I know, I transcribe. thought about doing that actually, Rich. <laughs> There's like a, some of them are there's pretty, some software, it's some called like O transcribed. I haven't really looked into it that much, but I think that I might be able to figure it out. <laughs> Denise, yeah, but, how, would it, how does it work? They take the detailed I get All you do is you drop in the, it into minutes. Actually, yeah. you're just, you're supposed to just be able to drop in the, um, the web link to it and it, it does it itself, but I haven't been successful yet, so we'll see. Apple Apple computers used to do that a while <laughs> back for uh, AD, you know, for handicap and ADA, that you could just simply pay it, play a tape into it and it would type it out, but it, there were errors in it. I mean, I think, you know, it'll be tough for them to identify the individual commissioner, but that would be something that, you know, we could easily go back to. So. Yeah, I'm looking into that, honestly. It sounds like it'll do like 80% of it for you. And then the, yeah. rest of it is, the rest of it is formatting and updating yeah. a name or something. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like the right way, Denise, to go. Probably. M more dependable. Hmm. Right. Well, yes. Mr. Chairman, can I, can I ask a question about the, uh, the place that... Uh, the beer hall that's that's going to go up pretty soon. I have, I oh, have. No. Well, actually, can can you hold that thought and let's vote on the minutes and then we can talk about that. All right. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Uh, Tony made the motion. George seconded. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> Abstentions. 
Okay, sorry, Peter, go ahead. No, no problem. So now that I'm retired, I get to walk in the mornings and uh, <laughs> I usually walk by that boondago operation uh, just about every morning. And just coincidentally, I ran into uh, the contractor who, ha who happens to be an old friend of mine. I didn't even know that. And um, so we just chatted a little bit, uh, just curious to see how, how improvements were going in the building, what he was up to and so forth. And he mentioned that there was an issue, Denise, uh, concerning the, the parking out front that they haven't resolved that. He wasn't clear, but he, he, was, he was kind of implying that, that there is an ongoing issue with the parking between him and the town. Can you just fill in that picture? I, I didn't know what he was talking about. So one of the conditions of approval was to provide um, handicap accessibility for the site. Um, and he, the applicant had indicated during the hearing that his uh, reluctancy to make improvements to the uh, main street to include handicap accessibility, um, he, as part of your condition, um, he was allowed until November of 2023 to actually construct the handicap because it was indicated during the hearing that that area was part of future um, road improvements that the town has planned. Um, that area is actually outside of the scope of the town improvements. Uh, so, um, so that is one issue. Uh, the other issue is um, he was looking to, for alternatives for the placement of the handicap and were unable to come to an agreement with town staff, including building official, myself and the engineering department in terms of location of the, the handicap space and um, the submission of uh, an engineered site plan um, for submission um, and ultimately to, to get the mylars to us so he could pull the building permits. So that that's really the holdup. Okay. It sounds like you're working through it though, right? It's not a show. Uh, we, are, we are diligently trying to work through it with him, yes. All right, all right, that's fine. I like having a business Good. like run and then figure out, you know, some of these odds and ends like parking or, you know, sidewalk actual locations in in certain other areas and other types of projects. But, you know, I'm totally down with letting them operate for a while and then realizing, OK, we absolutely need handicap parking here as opposed to guessing. And then maybe it's not in the right location afterwards. So. I well, I think the, the hiccup is that to get the building permit, they have to have handicapped parking somewhere. Yeah. yeah. State statute. Uh, freaking state. You know, yeah. unless, you know, which we <laughs> indicated to him, if he's able to obtain a state modification from the state building official, um, but, but he has not secured that. Plus okay. he has to get the people from the ground up to the up to the second floor. Yeah. Well, he was gonna have a lift, yeah. I think, right? Yeah, yeah he was. I feel like I feel like that's more of a challenge than where they're gonna park, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh uh, no, what's, yeah. What's his alternative uh, location, Denise, that he's proposing? Um, he's explored the location of one handicap space in the approved rear parking lot um, that the Planning and Zoning Commission had approved for six spaces. Okay. Um, the town engineer and um, planning staff had also uh, indicated that Church Street may be an option. Um, oh. But he also... Good idea. The, 
the current um, accessibility into the building is from the front. So if he relocates the handicap from Main Street, he'll also have to relocate the handicap entrance and or provide some sort of uh, ramp and walkway. Um, so. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's so far from the act from the entrance. Right. Um, yeah. OK. All right. Well, I guess it's a work in progress. So, you know, at yeah. this point, I'm waiting for uh, a plan from uh, Cassidy and then depending on, um, you know, his, his final proposal, it may be something that triggers him going back through uh, planning and zoning for a modification to his special permit. Okay. All right. Well, Thank that's you. a good segue into staff reports. Is there anything else? <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> you want to... Anything not depressing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so uh, our next planning and zoning hearing, um, we do have an application pending for the renewal of the outdoor entertainment for Lucky Lose at two. 22 main. Um, there's also a smaller application pending for a automobile storage in a driveway in the residential zone at 15 Crest Street. Um, there is an application pending for Brian Cousins um, on Wilkett Hill Road for a garage larger than permitted. And then not on this list, um, but I do anticipate uh, also hearing an application for 1199 Silestine. That's the former cardio fitness where uh, there's a current fit up for a child care center. They have um, a proposal for some of the additional space. They'd like to locate a recreational facility including a pool where they foresee most of their clients being clients from the childcare uh, facility as well. Other than that, I don't really have anything um, to report. Denise, can I ask- Other than last here? night, the town council approved um, changes to the tax incentive policy. What, George? Yeah, uh, Denise. Uh, what, what's going to happen with the sidewalks needed on uh, Mill Street uh, with our last approval? Is the, how's the town manager going to deal with that? What's up? You know what I'm talking about? Well, no, 10. I don't, George. We made, we made an approval, and it was said that Mill Street, where the Mill Street outlet is on the site, okay? Uh, required sidewalks, which I kind of agree with. And uh, though we didn't require it as a commission by the, the developer put in those because they're further from his driveway entrance and uh, yet they are needed over the tracks toward Middletown Ave somewhat. And I'm wondering how the town is going to deal with that matter. Because that's a very dangerous uh, section of road in there. And now we're going to be adding a couple of hundred people a day maybe coming out that way. It could be. Oh, so so the uh, recent approval for 1210 Silestine, the um, Correct. That's Porter, Porter correct. and Chester. Yep. Um, right. We are still waiting for uh, a letter from Fasanonial, Mark Vertucci, uh, in terms of satisfying the condition of the planning and zoning approval um, for traffic generation. Oh, and they, they expect to explain the need or no need for it or something? I don't remember sidewalks being out there. No, I, I don't remember I don't sidewalks remember being part of the conversation, George. I don't think sidewalks- part of the conversation, but not part of our our discussion it was said simply that there was a lot of traffic coming out both ways 
including Mill Street, and Mill Street might not be able to handle it without sidewalks. In it. And part of there are some sections of Mill Street that don't have them there, not even on one side. I think yeah, you know right. if we're if we're going to talk about like a bike pet assessment kind of thing in that area, w there's there's enough connectivity to and from Silas Dean, and then there's a little bit of connectivity when you're on the northern end and you're as you're heading in towards uh, the rail. But you know once you get to there, you know whether the need for pedestrian accommodations to Weathersfield Ave or Middletown Ave or I forget what the road's called there um, versus Silas Dean. You know, I think we're meeting this, the safety needs of the area with where the sidewalk is now. They reconstructed some of that, I know, uh, pretty recently. I'm actually looking at it right now. Um, but I think adding more sidewalk is you're into like a rail crossing, you're into you're into yeah, a you lot. Are. You're in, you're into a lot, but so, that's not even their their frontage. Yeah, it's not like that. That's not part of the part of exact, the You're you're exactly right. It's not so uh, to extend my point. It's not actually part of that property's concern. Like their they their job is to provide bike ped accommodations or connectivity to what's existing, and then it's up to the the, the town to figure out the rest of it well that's what i'm asking about the town what are we going to do about it? and you don't think it's needed it there's a there's a whole warrant scenario where you have to figure out like okay do we need this and so far unless there's a reason for somebody screaming saying we need this we don't well, that's why i'm talking i'm screaming about it and i think it's going to be needed there's a lot of traffic is going to be in Mill Street area. In that end, yeah, that end of Mill Street. Okay, don't, uh, yeah. don't pay attention to me. I don't care. I'll have to go to the council on it, I guess. I thought maybe I'd get some action stated here tonight, but uh, that might look into it or something might be done. No, I just, deal, I didn't here. realize. The town is going to be dealing, I know, with the other end of Mill Street, and that's important. But uh, this end requires, I think, something. And the sidewalk's a part of it. I just, I didn't realize, George, that it was part of your concern when we approved the application a few weeks ago. I didn't put it, make it part of the application. But it was discussed that it was needed uh, because there was going to be a lot of traffic. I think everybody talked a lot about that. So, so George, just to, to make sure, I, I, I didn't mean to dismiss what you're saying. All I was saying is that like the, the pedestrian accommodation requirements based on the application didn't really increase. So like everybody's going to be going to the Silas Dean back and forth, not necessarily more people it, going to, in the other direction. But uh, I, uh, I, underst uh, I understand. Wait, your wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me explain what I'm saying. The road is very narrow and very limited that Mill Street, that section. And the sidewalks are part of getting people off of it. I would not like to see somebody hurt down in there because there's an increased traffic conditions, which there is going to be. And uh, I believe uh, that should be a priority in the town. Uh, and uh, it should be, something should be done and it shouldn't require too much effort. I don't care if there are tracks there. That's something you were designed for. Anyway, I'm done with the issue. I'll take it up. Yeah, elsewhere. I mean, and, and, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think I think it's a, a conversation that we probably did have at the time we were approving the initial application, and it was a conversation that I think we did have when we were approving the board, and because people were coming in, you know, talking about. Um, you know, pedestrians coming down Middletown Avenue and increased traffic and so forth. Um, just I don't think it rose to the level of anything that we could have required the last week's applicant to do anything about just because of the minimal amount of frontage that they had, um, you know, compared to where all of the 
you know, all of the work would need to be done. But I think as a, you know, as a commission, you know, raising, raising the concern that this is a street that has, you know, substantial traffic coming into it that didn't exist 10 years ago, um, you know, that to the extent that, that sidewalks are appropriate, we should definitely, you know, look into it and, and move that forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're saying a much better way than I have what why it's needed. I, I mean, I, and frankly, it's probably more valuable than $2 million worth of sidewalks on the Putnam Bridge, but that's just <laughs> my opinion. Yeah, closed off sidewalk, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I walk and ride. Uh, I walk in that area, ride my bike through there, better weather, and, and George is absolutely right. It, it's it's pretty hairy there. Uh, so I think we, like you said, uh, Richard, I think we really ought to at least have the staff take a look at it and see what we can do to improve pedestrian walkways through that area. I mean, the road itself is no bargain, so. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's right, bad. Right, exactly. If the road were wider and bigger and nicer and a little higher, we wouldn't have that problem. problem. But it isn't. Uh, so, so, so do we need to do is send a, a little note to everybody in Middletown Avenue to see how many kids are walking to Port of Chester? I don't think it's just the kids. I think I, I just say I, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking I don't see really much change at all required, but I guess you, you should ask the question. I, I you know, I don't no, know what, I think, what would I think be different. The, no, I think the, the conversation is, you know, the the people who are already walking or biking down Mill Street now having, you know, instead of having nothing coming out of the south side of the road, having all of the people leaving Porter and Chester coming out of that side of the road. Exactly. Yeah. Mr. Plus, Chairman. Plus, plus the bank on the other side opening up and stuff. So, you know. There's a lot going on down there. Mr. Chairman um, and, yeah. and Denise, the, do you have an active, does the Planning and Zoning Commission have an active role in the Capital Improvement Program? Yes. yes. For the city? I, I would think that this would be a subject that could come up when you discussing the Capital Improvement Program. You could, and through that, you could direct, you know, that that would get a direction to the engineering department or whatever to 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 look that out over. Yes, I mean, and our what, engineering department is is looking for gaps in this type of connectivity. So maybe we can just you know refer that as 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 part of your capital improvement uh, role, the planning commission's capital improvement pro, uh, role in the program. And and uh, send that over to the engineering department. Some, you know, that there is a concern to that. Excuse me, yeah. because I don't know your process, and but I was just suggesting that. Oh, you you, you don't want to know our process. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to. Thank I'll you talk to Denise tomorrow. Support. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any public comment? Anybody else have anything they want to uh, discuss before we call it a night? All right. If not, thank you all for coming. Stay well. Stay Motion warm. to adjourn. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. All, all right. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Have a good evening. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good, good night. night. Bye. 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 Bye.